Hello, everyone. GM, GM. Welcome to another episode of the Solana Change Log. Today, I've got Jonas with me from the Solana Foundation DevRel team. How are you doing, hey, Jonas? Nick. I'm doing great. Very excited hey. for the Change Log. Yeah, you excited? All right, let's let's get to it. What uh, what commits did you see this week? So let's start with um, this one from Jean Chinque. Um, try to reset deploy slot on all cloned accounts. So this was a bug that was recently. People had problems like cloning accounts in their local validator, especially using Anchor. And Jacob created mm-hmm. an issue, and now it's already fixed. So that was very quick and very yes. nice. Fast turnaround. Love it. Then maybe another one. Um, add the option to record transactions to Ledger Tool. So this is a thing that uh, whenever there's a problem and maybe there's an outage or the network needs to be restarted, now we have the way to um, write all the transactions actually on the disk, and then you can directly look at them and see which one actually caused the error. So this would be very helpful. So in case we ever go down again, which we don't hope, this would help. What also helps all the core engineers that are doing all the immense testing and probably the Fire Dancer team as well to do all the the testing that they do for uh, testing out new features. So they can, if they're working on a new feature or new bug fixes, they can test it locally in like kind of uh, siloed uh, clusters. So it also makes that a little bit easier for them too. That is a very good point. Yes. And then we have the update requirements for the validators increased a little bit. Um, and now it's also written in the docs. So now it's like recommended to have 16 cores uh, with three gigahertz. And also snapshots um, are a bit larger. So like 500 gigabytes is recommended here. And what else do we have here? Uh, one terabyte for all three the account indexes. So yeah, this is now, um, if you're running a validator, that's um, recommended to have a little bit better hardware. Yeah, that would also apply to RPCs as well. So not just consensus nodes, the voting validators, but generic RPCs that are just like handling transactions and and uh, supporting the network that way. Yeah, then did you see this one here? Yeah, yeah. Speaking of RPCs, uh, John Chinkway again, he updated one of the RPC endpoints, uh, I think actually two of the RPC endpoints, to include some information about um, interest-bearing tokens. So if you're using the interest-bearing extension on the token extension program, this update actually includes some of that additional information uh, within like uh, getting parse token accounts to actually get the correct UI amount for some of these. And then he also notes uh, some other fixes in the future to try to add this information into other sections of the RPC responses. But there's going to be some additional work that needs to happen for that. Yeah, it's not in all of them. Like again, mm-hmm. I think when you do get past account, then you get now the correct UI amount. But for example, in transaction status, you yep. wouldn't get it yet. But yeah, this is probably on the way for later. Soon, TM. Yeah, and then there was also uh, a new syscall was added, um, will will be added s- shortly. Um, it'll be enabled during a, uh, using a feature gate. Um, but get epoch state, new syscall, you can, uh, it'll be useful for a couple of different things. Um, and uh, Joe Buffalo here kind of lists out some of those things for the future. Yeah, it unblocks a few things in the validator, oh, yeah. actually. You can now have like on-chain validator governance, for example, and secondary consensus mechanisms. So yep. this was for her before not possible. So this is nice to have. Yeah, it'll be great for SIMD89 too. And then uh, we got this sweet commit from JSTARI. He actually basically did this pretty hefty refactor in order to make it so the point in which validators are processing transactions and doing the fee payer check, basically making sure that whoever's designated as the fee payer actually has enough funds to uh, actually be deducted, their balance be deducted, signature verification, that kind of stuff basically refactored when that fee payer check happens. So it makes it so validators will actually process less uh, transactions. They'll do less compute on invalid transactions. So it's a little bit of a a nice little optimization there. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Then we have another program that has moved to Core VPF. Oh, yeah, the Core VPF initiative. Yeah, so Joe Buffalo, he's been basically the master of the Core VPF initiative. Uh, The address lookup table, the ALT program, is ready to be moved to core BPF. So it's under a feature gate. And once it's enabled, then we'll have uh, uh, just another program on core BPF. And that initiative just keeps on going. Yeah, and talking about more BPF programs, we have the SIMD-153. Oh, yeah. Um, it's about the Elga Malproof program. So it's what we talked about, I think, two weeks ago. So this is mm-hmm. more um, zero-knowledge functions uh, directly as syscalls in the, in the runtime, basically. And like you can do, um, for example, validate that uh, private key, uh, public key is actually owned by someone else as a zero knowledge proof and so on. 
And this SIMD is mostly about it that it gets decoupled from the token program. Because as you know, like these have been mm, added yeah. for the confidential transfers. And But theoretically, you can use these Algamal proofs for all kinds of cool use cases. And so that's why this is like, uh, it should be renamed to only, I think it's the, called the Zero Algamal Proof Program or something. And just so that it's not coupled to the token program anymore, because like, the runtime is basically for all programs and it shouldn't be narrowed down to be only for the token program, right? Yep. So yeah, I think this is probably a good thing, but it will probably delay a little bit the confidential transfers on mainnet, if I understand yeah. this correctly. Yeah, soon TM though. <laughs> yeah, um, very soon. All right, let's go ahead and dive into some resources. There's this really sweet one. Like I love vanity addresses. Uh, KV here wrote this uh, sweet Twitter thread that describes how you could actually kind of optimize the way that the uh, vanity addresses for programs are, are created. Um, it, it just speeds it up a lot, which is like really fun and really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's totally, totally cool. Like uh, he has like very, uh, very good tricks on how he makes it faster. So for example, you don't need the elliptic curve point arithmetic if you just use create account with seed. And yeah, he points it out all here, but I think it's not open source yet. He says he wants to do it on the weekend, if I read this correctly. So, but this is going to be really cool. You can have like, he says like up to nine digits in the pub key you can grind with this. Yeah. And then he plans to so. release like a GPU version. So you could use your GPUs to grind for vanity addresses for programs. So, which makes it so if you want like a really long vanity address, you could throw your GPU on it with these optimizations and make it so you can get like even cooler, even longer vanity addresses, which like I think is really fun. Yeah, I'm definitely going to get a Frostbutter. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is really cool for gaming. As you know, the Solana Game Jam is coming up, the next speed run oh, by yeah. Magic Block. Shout out and, to Magic Block. Yeah, and all the gaming SDKs are like in uh, super hard working to get like all the new features in and optimize their SDKs. And um, this one is the new phaser um, template. Um, it's not new, but it has been updated to use the Tiplink official wallet adapter. And this one is like really cool because it lets you have a wallet just with the Google email address. So I think this is really cool. Maybe more game SDKs will actually integrate this. And yeah, yeah Red Hat's cool. NFT uh, project. Um, I think uh, Blockiosaurus is behind this. So this is uh, yes, really sir. cool. All open source. And then what is this about? Yeah, this was this uh, article that Joey, um, we've given him shout outs on the, t on the show a couple of times now, but he wrote this article a little while ago about optimizing the stockpile V2 program. So he kind of like firsthand experience as a developer trying to optimize the compute within his program. He details a whole bunch of stuff in there, talks a lot about quadratic funding and how that works and how to optimize that specifically. Um, so it was a nice little, uh, a really great developer focused article. Mm, really cool, especially now with the new scheduler, it makes it even oh, yeah. more important that you update uh, your programs to have like to save CU. And we have some guides about this and some uh, videos, Certainly so we're going to put them again in the comments, probably. Yep, absolutely. And uh, also, there's like a really nice article from Helios. I think Ichigo wrote it about the Solana 118 release. And it has like everything in there about the um, new scheduler, how it works. Um, you can like learn how Solana works, actually, like the Ingress, SIG Verify, banking stage and all that stuff. It's a very good read. Uh, so I would totally recommend this is a new scheduler. It has like this uh, dependency graph of accounts to be able to better put the nice. transactions cool. in the block. This is, um, yeah, it's a really nice article. That's cool. And I'll have to give it a read. Yeah. And now let's look at the Stack Exchange. Yeah, last but not least, Goats. the Stack Exchange for the week. We've got um, shout out to everyone on Stack Exchange that's uh, over there helping answer a bunch of questions, helping new developers and experienced developers. You got Jimmy, who's at the top this week. And then there's Joey again, who wrote that article about Stockpile. And yeah, we've got exactly. Ari, White Seal, Jonas. That guy's pretty cool. Chalda. <laughs> yeah, great work, everyone, on, yeah. on Stack Exchange this past Adula, week. Adula, Servan. Really, really cool stuff. Burger Bob, so it's here. So Landy. <laughs> yeah, nice, it's all, nice, all the nice, usual nice. faces. But that'll wrap it up for this week on the Change Log, and we'll catch you next time. See you. Bye bye.